we, we have a duty to God and duty to the universe to be our best version of ourselves. And that's going to involve money, right? If you're past a certain age and you, and you really haven't got your life together at all, I avoid those people out. The person who's going to snake you for food is the starving man, right? But man, yeah, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's a gorgeous thing. I think there's nothing at all wrong with it. Today in 2022, what's your biggest money wealth hack type of strategy? I mean, I'll be honest, man. Before the big new king, so I was doing like eight or nine million dollars a month. What's been your biggest money mistake ever? The most important thing men can be doing today is trying to get rich as fuck as well. They came to me and deleted my YouTube, my Instagram, my Airbnb, my Uber, seven banks, my payment processor, my Discord account, my Gmail. Holy moly. All within, bro, within 48 hours. Think about how scary what he just said was. If that doesn't freak you out about the world that we live in, you're officially now on notice. One of the worst things you can do in a controversial type of situation, whether it be a scenario, a subject matter, a policy, or a person, is to assume and make judgments too soon. When I run across a guy by the name of Andrew Tate, who's probably the most misunderstood, most canceled, most hated man of our generation, most searched person on Google in our generation, canceled. Now, if you check these couple of videos out, I've done a couple of reactions to some of the videos he's put on in interviews he've had, he's had with different influencers and YouTubers. So I want to get to the source. I had the conversation with Andrew Tate. At least I want to get some context. I want to see and look him in the face, look him in the eyes, and see if he's really what people say he's out to be. And I think for watching this video, draw your own conclusions. I want you to win after this. I hope that you choose and consider to be working wise. And so therefore, when these elections start coming up or when it comes to a subject matter that you don't understand, it's areas of life insurance or areas of entrepreneurship or areas of leadership development, you becoming a better person. If there's certain subject matters that you initially have a knee-jerk reaction negatively against it, guess what you should do? Research the subject matter. There's always their story, there's your story, and then there's the truth. So in this conversation with Andrew Tate, I ask him a little bit about what's going on with him currently. I ask him a little bit about marriage and what he feels about marriage, what he feels about business partnerships and who he aligns with and associates with. And at the same time too, what to do with money in 2022 and 2023 and beyond to make sure money is constantly on your side. So with that being said, let's check out this conversation. I'll share with you that I had in private with him. I'd like to share it with you. Conversation here with the most controversial and most canceled man Andrew Tate. Check this out. Andrew, how you doing, man? I'm good, bro. How are you? Oh, bro. Listen, man, I'm, I'm fired about this conversation. How was your time with Patrick and, and uh, Adam? Man, they're amazing guys. Amazing guys. And I've seen your videos as well. I appreciate them very, very much. You have? I've seen them, bro. I've been watching them all. Have they, have they taken you down yet? I, I got some messages today that they took down like 50 videos mentioning me. Wow. No, they haven't taken us down. So how's things you're in? Things are, things are good to go. Things are so, so fine, so good. I, um, I, I have a book we just launched, uh, which is Faith Made Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with, uh, a lot of people think it's about religion. It's about following your faith as an entrepreneur. And uh, so I, I, I love your perspective on that. And uh, we have, we have uh, conversations about y your stuff all the time. I'm, I'm sure you Absolutely. can imagine. Absolutely. And it's like, um, I do believe we, we have a duty to God and duty to the universe to be our best version of ourselves. And that's going to involve money, right? I mean, what, what is it's got to. So the, the, our enemies will always try and paint us as bad or try and say that we are somehow negative for trying to acquire wealth. But when your enemies are rich, it's good to have some money yourself. You don't want to, you know, it's hard to fight a war with nothing. You can't be poor. That's it, man. You, you can't be bringing plastic knives to a gunfight. You know? <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. So what are your misconceptions when it comes to the subject matter of money or adding faith and money? Because... Most times this is a taboo subject that a lot of churches and a lot of faith-based groups don't want to talk about. They don't want to talk about relationships. They don't want to talk about politics. And they definitely don't want to talk about money, which is such an important topic today. The enemy has confused everybody that the church or God's people should not talk about it. So what is your context when it comes to stereotypes, myths, and misconceptions when it comes to faith and money? Which, by the way, chapter one of Faith Made Millionaire, which officially now is a number one bestseller on Amazon in multiple categories. Chapter one is destroying and demystifying myths and lies 
that many of you have had with faith and money. So therefore, you can go out there, play some financial offense, stop hiding behind God as an excuse, get the freaking work, make a difference in our community, rise above this interest rate hike situation, rise above this pending recession that's, everybody feels that's already a recession right now. Technically we are, but nobody in the government has called it. When uh, the winds of life come blowing by, you've got a financial weapon on your side. So stop with the excuses. And I'm fired up here later on in this conversation about what Andrew Tate says about making money. How does a top G, we're talking about team building and partnering, because I noticed how uh, Sterling Cooper is a very outspoken friend of yours. Yeah. So, you know, how does, uh, how does top G, how does, uh, how, does, how does one build a team in team building and partnering? What's your bullshit filter? Yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, I have a few criteria I try and stick to. Obviously, people with aligned values. What I try and do personally is I try and it's not so much trying to find people who have certain things, but avoiding certain things. So in my experience, if someone's past a certain age and they're still broke, that, that's a, they, they must have some kind of hidden laziness or some kind of hidden, I don't know, a lot of them will come up with a bunch of excuses. But if you're past a certain age and you, and you really haven't got your life together at all, I avoid those people absolutely. You need wow. people who are at least semi-winning. Because in my experience, the, the person who's going to snake you for food is the starving man, right? That's right. So, so um, I try and only do business with people who have too much money to, to rob me. So uh, a lot of my business deals are on handshake because really? I know that I know that we're all in it for, for the greater cause and we're in it for the brotherhood and we're in it to make money. Yeah, sure. But we'd never lose our brothers over a little bit of cash. So that's the first thing. Second thing is obviously networking and trying to find a strong network. That's difficult to do. I have my own network. There are networks online. But I think as the world gets more and more polarizing, you need to find the people who not only are complaining about the problem, but are looking to fix the problem. And I think one of the ways for fixing the problem is becoming, is galvanizing yourself against the enemy. And that requires the degree of finance. I think the most important thing men can be doing today is trying to get as rich as fucking possible. You know, being a person that recruits, trains, and develops insurance agents and develops agency owners across the country, I definitely re relate with this because I can't tell you sometimes when we interview somebody and we look on their LinkedIn and we looked on their social media and they got this product they're selling this month and they got this product that they're selling this month, and this product they're selling this month. And they felt this way about somebody and they, they're best friends and that's my homies, that's my road, that's my road dog, right? And next thing you know, six months later, they're dogging them out. They're calling them out for some reason. They're throwing them under the bus. And then they go from one opportunity to another opportunity. And then they have a conversation with me convincing me that multiple streams of income are a very good thing, especially early in your career before you've even made your money yet. And so those are certain things that I resonate with this because let me tell you this, my biggest area's concern is today's men that are in relationships and having kids and separated two different homes. The kids are in between two different homes and the father has not got his finances squared away yet. But yeah, he's going to go party. He's going to go hang out. He's going to blow his money on, on video games and iPhones and all these different things. But yet he's not providing for his children. Now, you may not get along with baby mama. Fair enough. I get that. But that doesn't mean you skirt your responsibility of providing for your family, especially for the children that you've helped bring into this world, that you let a weekend fling turn into an actual baby, an actual child, but yet you don't want to provide. I have a massive problem with that. And so when you provide, guess what happens to you? You take care of your responsibilities. You make sure that the people that you birthed and created into this world can look up to you one day and honor you and respect and know that from day one, you've always been there. That's your legacy. That you didn't skip out on your responsibilities. And then you can look at yourself for the rest of your life in the mirror. And if nobody else gives you respect, even if your own children don't give you respect, you don't lose self-respect for yourself. And so when I see flip side, I've seen men who are 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, still broke. I get having a divorce in your family, but yet still broke. And what's worse, it's not the financial condition of their situation. It's the mental condition of older men that in their heart, brain, and spirit, they're broken. I'm too old to start again. I'm too old to recreate myself. I'm too old to start a new business. Never stop with these excuses already. Take care of your finances. Take care of your home. A responsibility of a man is to go out there and hunt and to provide and provide protection. 
for his home, for his tribe, for his community, for his city, for his country. It's man's design. And so when you're looking at men that you are looking to associate with, are they focused on other things or are they focused on getting to the next level of your life? I love this feedback from Andrew Tate. I'm telling you, bro. Like, yep. even me personally, they, they came for me hard. They came for me and deleted my YouTube, my Instagram, my Airbnb, my Uber, seven banks, my payment processor, my Discord account, my Gmail. Holy moly. All within, bro, within 48 hours. So um, another thing is you need to sit and analyze and try and think, how would I survive without these institutions? How would I survive without these things? Because being a step ahead of it is so much easier than waiting for it to happen to you, you know? And, and just so you know, like I said, I have a lot of people who work internally at these companies, and they're not completely liberal. I've had a bunch of uh, anon emails from people who say, look, I work at Meta. I work at YouTube. They are analyzing in real time the results of this ban and what people think about it. And they know that most people are unhappy about what happened. And that, that's got them scared a little bit because they're no longer seen as fair, and everybody knows that. And they have a very difficult situation. They either have to let me back, which I don't think they'd ever do, mm -hmm. or they have to or they have to double down and try and go full Nazi and just shut me up absolutely everywhere. And that's going to result in a lot more censorship for lots of people. So anyone who's close to me, I'm saying, listen, whatever you're making on YouTube, whatever you're doing, you need to start backing things up, bro. I wish I wish I was pushing people to rumble when my YouTube channel was still alive. Got you know, it. it's like it's always harder once they nuke you. And, and I think it's just going to get str more stringent and more stringent, bro. So that's the first thing in, in terms of network. I, I, have a, I have a network myself called The War Room. If you go to CobraTake.com and just tell them you spoke to me. And, we, and we're, we're about 2,300 guys all around the world, and we have a very similar outlook. And we're basically just battle planning and strategy and trying to fight this. But I don't know if you're big on You watch TikTok. Do you watch TikTok very much? I, I don't watch. I have a profile on there, but we upload all the time. But uh, I, I, I tend to just, just upload, not necessarily watch all the time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. But like the, the algo, I basically run the algo, right? And I don't even have an account anymore. And that's just because I have so many people on my side and anyone who's on my team just reposting things. That's another thing I'll say. Anyone who works for you or anyone you can give an affiliate deal to or anyone you can motivate, especially something like TikTok, they need to spam the they need to spam the algo. So you have so many amazing podcasts. Each podcast could be chopped down into, let's say, with all the different versions of editing, all the different kind of themes and tunes they can put on it. Each podcast is 500 to 600 TikToks. You need like 20 accounts just blasting out to the world, pushing them to some, pushing them to like an email list or a Rumble account or something that can't get banned. Hmm. Because I think the, the face of social media has changed and what you're doing with your long format is amazing, but there are so many people who have genuine ADHD, bro. They can't watch something for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to a degree, it's been my downfall because the, the, the TikToks and everything blew up and kind of got out of control. But if you can control, if I can go back in time and I got a team, which I could control the TikToks and create the message, man, I, got, I became the most Googled man on earth. With no TikTok kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> Representing shy Town. I'm from shy Town too, baby. So Amazing. It's Amazing. Up. So I'd say, I'd say to you, especially your podcast, because I've watched a few of them. They're excellent. You need to get them chopped up, short format. Everywhere, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok. You need to hire someone or get someone full-time all day, every day, just blasting the algo and pushing them to something that's bulletproof, either an email list or a Rumble channel. That's, that's an easy way for you to start getting a whole bunch of data in the bank that big tech can't take from you, you know what I mean? Think about how scary what he just said was. That within 48 hours, he was wiped out with a systematic targeted move sweeping his bank's credit card processing, websites, hosting, Discord, social media within 48 hours. It's a coordinated strike. If that doesn't freak you out about the world that we live in, you're officially now on notice. you got to process this. If somebody decides to go to the social media switch with your name on it and decide to turn it off, and you've made a living on social media. If you made a living online, you made a living through charging people on credit cards. They just shut you off. Well, how do you pay the bills? How do you eat? How do you provide for your family? How do you protect your family? How do you go from one city to another? How do you go from one country to another? You don't. They just shut you off. So some takeaways. I'm reminded of friends that are Mormon in faith. And if you visit their homes, they usually have some form of storage or pantry. And they have food stored up there for weeks, if not months, ready to go just in case. Don't get caught up in the social media, internet-based 
bank-based form of tyranny. Have gold, have silver, have some form of other methods of exchange. Water and food as currency. I know this because when I was in Somali, Africa, it was one big wasteland. No rule outside the warlords who had guns and who had food. Want to take a quick look at what looks like with no law? Somalia, Africa. We were there. Operation Restore Hope. And I saw firsthand what it looked like with lawlessness at 19, 20 years old. I saw firsthand what it looked like with no medical care. And I saw firsthand what it was like with famine and no food. Who had power? Who had control? Now, I'm not so sure if America will ever get to that, but there's certain things, there's certain polls out there that says America feels that within the next 10 years, there potentially may be a civil war. These things that you have to be worried about and plan for, and the way you eliminate that worry is to have a plan for it. And hopefully it's a plan that you hope, and I hope, that we never have to use. But if we do have to use it, at least we know we have confidence and clarity when those dark times do come to make sure we thrive, not just survive. Let me ask you this question. Um, message to the young man. I've got four minutes here with you, and then... Last sure. 30 seconds, I'll ask to see if we can get contacts him out some way. Message sure. to young men. L I'm married, and yep. I think if, this might be a little controversial here, but if I was following the Cobra Tate method, I don't think I'd ever get married, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be making my money, I'd be doing my thing. So your message to men it, as it relates to, once you finally find a partner, once you finally find that woman, you think you got a girlfriend, you're solid with her, but uh, what would your message meant to be that in terms of having marriage in your life? Yeah, you, you, you always need to have that one chick who's down to you. Like, running around with girls and stuff is fun, but you always need to have that one who's down for you no matter what. And that's super That's super important. Uh, in the West, the only thing I have against marriage is you have to be careful of the legality of it. It's not about the, the institution or the woman. It's the legality of it. And it's kind of just trying to see ahead and make sure you're prepared from that perspective. But, man, yeah, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's a gorgeous thing. I think there's nothing at all wrong with it. And um, I, I'd say to young men, yeah, find a woman who's really down for you, but make sure she knows enough to support you, but not so much that you don't have any aces up your sleeve. That's that's what I would that's what I would say. Andrew, what are you talking about? Aces up your sleeve. Maybe when we circle back again, I may ask you about to, to unpack that. <laughs> well, th there you have it. So, Cobra Tate does believe in marriage, just not the legal legalization of it. So, the thought here: if you're thinking about getting married, have a conversation early about finances. Have a conversation early about credit. Have a conversation early about how you buy things and use your money. Have that conversation early in your relationship because one of the key areas that divide people, whether it be marriages and partnerships or family members in general, is when money becomes a factor. And if you're not on the same page on values, on the same page of spending patterns, not on the same page of investing, not on the same page of spending, then that's gonna be an area of conflict. So my suggestion, if you are getting married, you have three accounts, Number one, you're going to have your money. She is going to have her money. And then here, you're going to have our money. So that allows you to still have the latitude to budget and buy what you want to buy. Her latitude to buy what she wants to buy. You can keep it in secrecy. You can share it. But the money that's our money, that's money that we invest together, we spend together, we vacation together, we invest together, whatever the case may be. That we spend our, our family together, we spend our children together. So, um, yeah, Andrew, I'm not so sure what you mean about Aces up your sleeve with a couple of wink winks here and a smile. But uh, I'm sure when we circle back together again, we'll talk about it. But anyway, for those of you watching this, I don't believe in any aces up your sleeve. I don't believe that you should. I, th I believe that your life in marriage is intertwined and interwoven to create one body, to create one soul, one spirit. That's my belief. That you're intertwined with your spouse. And that's not a message that a lot of people hear today because their fear, their fear is what? I'm going to be wronged one day. They're lacking trust. But if you go about your life, you go about your marriage more specifically, you go about your relationships and you don't fully trust that other person, sure, will they probably do you wrong? Possibly. But you don't control that. But you can control you. You can control and make sure that uh, you're transparent. You can control and make sure that you're giving that person your very best. You can control and make sure you give that person 100%. They choose to break up on you. Well, guess what? I know it's a heartbreak, but now it's on them. You can look at yourself again back in the mirror and you say, I respect myself because I gave it my very best. Now, they're going to have to come back down the road, whether it's next week or years from now. They're going to have to come back and apologize to you, not the other way around, for sure. 10 and 25.
I believe in acquiring wealth and abundance in order to prove my life and do good for those I care about. Today in 2022, what's your biggest money wealth hack type of strategy? Yeah, the biggest wealth hack in 2022 is understanding that we live in an attention economy. If you can garner attention, you can make money. doesn't matter if you sell a book. doesn't matter if you sell a course. doesn't matter if you sell meetups. You can get attention. You can get money. And you need to understand that everyone's attention span is fucking fried. Watch someone on, watch someone on TikTok. Look how, look how fast they swap video after one second, two seconds max. You need to put together super long format stuff for your dedicated fans, but hard hitting short format, hard hitting stuff for the, the casual viewer. That's the key to it. And then you have to get their, you have to get their details. They have to know who you are. And from there you can monetize anything, bro. You can sell fucking skincare cream, fucking <laughs> books. It doesn't matter what it is. That's, that's what I would say. Is that what's going on in your head when you're on a podcast? You're like, dude, I got, man, they just gave me a softball. I'm about to crush it here in 30 seconds. Oh, 100%. So I, I love the long format stuff, but I love when it gets chopped up and it's short format, and especially on TikTok accounts with like an affiliate link or with a link there to sell money. I mean, I'll be honest, man. Before the big nuking, I, I had I had 250,000 people in Hey Chew. So I was doing like 8 or $9 million a month in Hustlers University before the big, the big attack. And they've tried to destroy my processing and stuff, but I, I found a way and I'll be back. But that was just off short format, short format content, pushing people to a link. That's all it was. That's awesome, man. If you can answer this in 30 seconds, what's your sure. biggest money? What's been your biggest money mistake ever? My biggest money mistake ever was thinking that it took money to make money. And it does with investing. But with most business ideas, if you have a good team, a good network, and you have the ability to garner attention, you can start any business in the world basically for free. If you, can, if you, can, if you have a good team and you can get people to pay attention to you, you can sell products before they even fucking exist. So the biggest thing I would say is when someone says, I want to invest a million, I'm like, whoa, well, slow down. If you want to sell this, let's sell it. Let's make the million. Send everyone an email. Apologize for the delay and spend the money you've already made. That's that's what I would do. Well, what do you think about that wealth hack? Listen, Andrew's greatest strength ended up also being his greatest area of weakness because it was that short form content that people misunderstood that took him down. It's sad though, overall, that this happened to him because I don't listen. I don't think anybody should be silenced like this. By the way, if it can happen to Andrew Tate, if it can happen to a president, a former president of the United States of America, guess what you think can eventually happen to you? So the wisdom behind his message here is to make sure you have some form of bulletproof list and method of communication to the people that you influence and people that follow you and your customers, your clients, your potential customers down the road, have a way to communicate with them even if somebody takes that on off switch and turns it off and cancels you, turns you off, you still have a way to monetize that list. Your years of building that list, years of building a follow, years of building your brand, you still have a way to get out there and communicate still with them and sell them whatever it is that you're selling, whether it be a book, et cetera, et cetera, like what he was saying. With that being said, I've got a shameless plug here. If you're watching this right now, we've got Faith Made Millionaire as a bestseller in multiple categories. So I want to say thank you to you that's allowed us to be in that regard, a bestseller in multiple categories. So what we're doing here, if you go to faithmademillionaire.org, and if you purchased a book and you left a review, we've got a Zoom link we want to send you to for next third this coming Thursday, the last Thursday of September 2022. We've got a conversation, Q&A, with a friend of mine, Dr. Emerson Edrich, who wrote the book Love and Respect, and one we're going to talk a lot about, which is a book, especially in these texting battles that we have these days. He wrote a book called Before You Hit Send in terms of relationships with spouses, relationship with your partners, just relationship with yourself. We want to tap into a higher level of thinking when it comes to those relationships so therefore you can have a higher quality of life and live happier when you go through conflict and have a strategy to go through conflict. So therefore you're less distracted when it comes to your wealth building plan, your happiness plan, prosperity plan, whatever the case may be. So please go to the website faithmademillionaire.org, drop your contact information and we'll send you a link to join us on our next Zoom. Bro, thank you, man. Thank you. You've been a massive supporter, and this, this has taught me a lot about who's on the right side of the fence, you know? Come on, baby. Hey, real knows real, man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Let's stay in touch. Trump God bless email. you, brother. We'll talk to you, man. Thank Bye -bye. you. Well, there you have it. You see, there is no excuse for you not to be making money today. And by the way, again, the name is YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. Some of you may think that it'd be a luxury to become a millionaire. Some of you think, oh, maybe down the road I'll become a millionaire. Do you realize with the rising interest rates, the rising inflation, the political environment that we're in today, the dreams and goals that you have, the fact that you want to be more autonomous and have more control of your schedule, you want to 
take care of the people that you love and care about on both sides in the family, you realize that most likely it's going to take a million dollars of income for you to fund and finance those ideals, for you to fund and finance that to become a dream into a reality. So this YouTube channel is dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And I hope that after your mindset that you expect it in your life one day. If you don't, I'm gonna tell you every time we do another episode that you deserve to become a millionaire, that you must make a million bucks so therefore you can fund and finance the things. It's no longer gonna be a luxury, it's gonna be a necessity for you to do so. With that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? You agree with Andrew Tate? You don't agree with Andrew Tate? Let us know. Please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, we have a couple other reaction videos here too as well for you to check out based on some actions and good and bad and the ugly of certain celebrities and athletes. So therefore you can learn from their mistakes and their patterns of success. So therefore you can get to where you want to go much sooner and faster. That being said, guys, if you watch this video and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting like. If you've watched a couple of our videos and you still haven't subscribed, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, conceal the smart, conceal the smart, and be mighty smart today.